Now, how do we know if we're trying to take a, a larger number of small trades, how do we know what products to look at? Let's talk about how I set my watch list up. Now, I do want to take a larger number of small positions, but I do not want to sit there and be stuck looking at thousands of stocks on a nightly basis or a, a, every weekend. Narrow your universe of stocks down to a small number. Okay, there's no reason to look at, you know, 500 stocks on a daily basis. If you take that route, you're going to find yourself trading products that you have no experience with. It's going to be hard to trade with any type of confidence if you take that approach. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do, focus on a smaller list of products and get to know those names. What is the winning percentage over time? Not just over the past week or two. What's the winning percentage on Apple over the past six months, the last 12 months? How long does a typical trade take? How liquid are the options? It's all information that I want to know on every stock that I trade. Once we have a watch list in place, we want to focus on taking trades from that watch list. Ignore the noise. Don't try to catch every hot name that's in the news. Focus on the names that you know and have experience with, and you're going to be far more successful long term. A bigger watch list doesn't mean bigger profits. Okay, don't overweight one area of the market. Diversify. Right now, it's very, very tempting to want to go all in on tech because the NASDAQ has been so strong. That's been where the activity's at. We got to fight that urge because we know markets will cycle. Next couple of weeks, I wouldn't be surprised if tech starts to weaken and the financials start to recover a little bit. You want to have diversification because bottom line is none of us know what the market's going to do next. We all have opinions on what we feel is going to happen next, but none of us know for sure. That diversification is huge. And then don't cut, let the outcome of one trade prevent you from taking the next trade. If you have a losing trade, if you've got a few losers on Apple, don't throw Apple to the curb. We know Apple long-term, Apple's been one of my best performers now for the last decade. During that time, I've had losing streaks. And if I just throw Apple to the curb after a couple of losers, I'm missing out on the big picture. And the big picture is that name has produced thousands of dollars of profit. So then that's why it's so important to keep that trade journal going, right? Document those trades. So you know, you can back it up that, hey, even with a few losers, I'm still making money long-term. So the criteria for a name to make it to our list, I want to make sure that op, that name has liquid options. We talked about that earlier. You're looking for volume and open interest. Ideally, you want that volume interest spread across many different strike prices. The better the liquidity, the better quality product that is to trade. You also want to trade products that have history of, of good movement. You don't want to trade a stock that has a big move for a month and then just move sideways for the next six months. You want to trade names like Apple, Facebook, Amazon, names that are very active on a regular basis. Not only do they have good liquidity in the options, but if they have good movement back and forth, that's going to give you an endless number of opportunities on a regular basis. And then diversification. It's really crucial to have a mix of stocks and ETFs. Have a mix of different sectors. Don't fall in love with one sector. Make sure that the key sectors are covered. And the key ones here on the bottom of this slide, the financials, energy, some of the index products, tech, some of the global ETFs. Those are the areas that you wanna have on your list. Some of, the, some of the retail names. The better mix of products that you have, the better consistency you will have with your returns long-term. So you're going to want to determine how many names you can afford to have on your list. So take into account how big is your account? How much time do you have to check your charts every day? If you have a $5,000 account and you've got 20 minutes a day to check the markets, don't have a watch list of 50 products. You can't trade all those products, nor do you have the time to track all those. And if you don't have the capital to take all those trades, you're going to left, be left picking and choosing which ones look best to you. And cherry picking trades is very, very difficult. I say that from experience. You're going to find yourself picking the losers and missing the winners. I would rather have you use a watch list of 20 stocks. You can do that in a few minutes a day. You can take multiple trades and still keep your risk at a manageable level. You have to, you have to factor that if all the names on your watch list give you trades at the same time, are you ability to, are you, do you have the ability to take all those trades? It doesn't happen very often where everything triggers in at the same time, but if it does, are you okay with that? So that you're not picking and choosing which trades look best. 
and then go through the names on your list and do some testing. What does a typical trade look like? How long, when, when Apple starts to break out to the upside or to the downside, how long does that move typically take? Prove to yourself that those names work. Go back and, and think or swim. It has a really nice back testing tool available inside of the platform. Go back in and take a look. What happened over the past six months if I sold credit spreads following the criteria that we talked about today? Prove to yourself that those products work before you put any of your hard earned capital on the line. Very, very important process. It's not fun. Back testing, it takes time and um, you're not getting paid for it but it's gonna pay off in the long run when you start to trade live. It's a big part of the process. So have it, uh, I'm putting trend trades and reversal setups. Um, what I'm talking about there is, is have a mix of long calls and long puts, have a mix of debit spreads, credit spreads. That's gonna be ideal. Mix up your trade types on your watch list. That's, I can't stress that enough. And once your list is in place, trust the system. Don't skip around between markets. I'm not saying you can't ever change your watch list. Just be slow to change. My list has not changed much the last six, 12 months. I trade the same names consistently. I got a couple of emails last night from people asking, what have my results been since the market exploded? What happened when uh, markets were slow? You know, if you go back 12 months. The key is I'm trading names that I'm very familiar with. If I go over to Thinkorswim on the left-hand side, you guys can see the names that I trade. Very familiar names here, right? American Airlines, Apple, AMD, BABA, Boeing, Bank of America, Citigroup. These are all very well-known names. These are names that it doesn't matter if the market's active, choppy, there's always something that I can do. The options are liquid. They have a good track record of volatility. If you trade some of these big, well-known names, you are gonna be far better off. Are there names out there that have good movement that are not on my list? Sure, that's fine. I'm not looking to capture every move in the market. I'm looking to get to know my list really well, find my niche, find my list of products that I know really well. And if I trade those names consistently, the profit's gonna come. I'm gonna make enough money. You know, I'm gonna make more money than I know what to do with. 